thing doesn't carry over to sports writing. No, I don't think it does. But I'll tell you where the analogy is. There are big awards at the end of every year, and, and you, you, you submit your stuff. I think all of us, including me, probably write a certain percentage of columns that you know I'm doing this bec uh, because eventually I want to submit it for the awards. I mean, there are some that I, I consciously... Now, again, I, I wouldn't do it if I weren't interested in it, but this one, I, uh, if it turns out as good as I think it will, I'm going to submit it. So I do write with, uh, with an idea of awards in mind some of the time. Is there a general political orientation of sports writers? Yes. Uh, I would say sports writers are generally left liberal. Do you have a theory on why that is? Well, um, let's see. I would say in general journalists are, are liberal, uh, except for the ones that you know who aren't. Uh, doesn't it seem, I've never made a study of it, but doesn't it seem that universities generally tend to be intellectuals, tend to be um, liberals? And I think yes. a, a, a lot of them come from, you know, that kind of a background. That's all, you know, they're middle class, uh, sometimes upper middle class. Nah, not sometimes, middle class. And they come out of universities, and I think they've been informed with that. It's rare to meet a sports writer who's, who I would think was a Republican. Are there any famous sports writers who are, that you could out as Republicans? <laughs> are there any famous sports writers who are Republicans? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but again, I don't. I would never ask anyone his or her, uh, you know, political party. I would never ask that. And again, it would never even come up because basically, what sports writers talk about is sports. And here, uh, here's what I mean, Luke. Let's say we're on the road, we're covering a 49er game, we're, we're in Atlanta. So the game ends. It's a day game on Sunday. The game ends, and we all go out to a nice restaurant and have a, a bunch of, uh, you know, some bottles of wine. Basically, what we're talking about is the game that happened, why the coach did what he did. Did you hear the story about the tight end, what happened to him you know, last night in the hotel? Uh, there's a lot, 90% uh, of the conversation is that. There's very little uh, about uh, politics. Now, there may have been this year on the road, I haven't traveled any this year with, with the Niners or Raiders because they cut the travel budget in my paper, but I would just assume that if there were, it would be people saying Obama was great and McCain's a jerk. I would assume that's what they were saying, um, but I, I wasn't there to hear it. Um, there's, there's very little talk about, about that kind of thing for the most part. It's mostly about uh, the team you cover and what's going on. What percentage of your peers would you regard as intellectuals? Peers meaning sports writers, not yeah. stylists. Yeah. Um, Okay, uh, I would have to say, I would say 5%, but I, I'm not sure I could name the 5%. Uh, I would, it, 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 it's, I, first let's come back a little and say, what do you mean by an intellectual? All right? To me, an intellectual is someone who thinks about the deep questions of life. It is someone who uh, is extremely well-informed and spends part of his or her life uh, reading best literature, reading history, uh, reading philosophy, um, I suppose reading um, about politics. So I, I, I don't think a lot. I mean, I would like to sometimes consider myself an intellectual. I know I talked to Ray Ratto at the Chronicle. He knows a heck of a lot about history. Uh, he reads literature. He thinks about things. Um, I suppose Ray... Uh, I, 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 I think that sports writers are generally, um, how do I want to say this? They have a certain mindset which you would not call intellectual. It's not like the people who are still my friends that I went to Stanford with. Um, I, a friend of mine just wrote a book at wondering, you know, uh, saying that the world has become morally um, relativist and he feels that there are uh, moral absolutes uh, which people are not aware of. And, I, and I've read his book. He lives in Toronto. We've talked about it. We've written to each other about it. I, I don't think I've ever been in a um, sports 
a press box where people talked about moral absolutism versus moral relativism. What was the book? It's called The Book of Absolutes. Do you believe there are moral absolutes? I have a problem with that. Um, he does. Uh, since I'm not sure I believe in God, I don't know where these moral absolutes would come from. But I think most cultures do believe you shouldn't kill each other. So uh, that, that, for the most part, with exceptions, is a moral absolute. So I do believe that moral absolutes have not come from God or the Ten Commandments, but they come because all people confront the same world. We all are born and live and die in the same world, pretty much. And uh, we would have to formulate certain absolutes based on our experience of the world to be able to get along with it. And the Chinese and the Indians and the, and the, uh, you know, the Western world would probably all come to those on their own because they were confronting the same world. What percentage of athletes, professional athletes would you describe as intellectuals? It's hard for me because, again, I, I rarely would get into those kinds of conversations with them. But having said that, I would say clearly Steve Young, uh, it, uh, part of being an intellectual is thinking about uh, the basic questions of life. Certainly he does. Uh, I would say he's, he's an out-and-out -out intellectual um, in all the best ways. Uh, no, yeah, can I just yeah, yeah, can I just quick interrupt you there? He's the only professional athlete who ever asked me my name. Like I was a small time reporter for a small time radio station in Auburn, California, and I'd cover the Forty ers at Sierra College. He was the only athlete who ever asked me my name. Well, isn't that interesting? He had a tremendous empathy for other people. Yeah, um, I always thought. Steve could run for political office because he had those instincts. Um, I, I don't know why he hasn't. I would say Bill Walsh, in certain ways, he was, he was a very brilliant man, and in certain ways I would say, yeah, sure, I, why not? Uh, I would say Bill uh, was an intellectual. I'm, I'm sort of, uh, after that, gosh, uh, maybe I'm running out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I want to make it clear, but I'm not putting down sports writers or professional athletes for not being no. intellectuals, because no. I'm not sure that there's any great virtue in being an intellectual. I think some of the biggest jerks that I've met in my life have been intellectuals, and that's, that's one of the reasons I'm not in an academic life. So I want to make that clear. I'm just trying to honestly answer your, your questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I understand. <laughs> have you been regarded as a freak because you've got a PhD in English and you're a sports writer? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Um, people are aware of it, but it's, they don't call me Dr. Lowell, and it's almost never referred to. Um, and people, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years around here, so if at one time I was, I was thought of as a freak, not anymore. I was thought of as a freak when I first started. When I first started at the Chronicle, I had never, as I said, had a job before. And, I, and what I was told to my face many times was I didn't deserve to be a sports columnist because I had not paid my dues, meaning I hadn't started covering high school sports and worked my way up and all of that. And there was a tremendous amount of resentment. And frankly, when I first started, I wasn't as good a sports columnist as I should have been. And so I was probably vulnerable to some of those criticisms. So I was looked at as, as a freak um, because I seemed to have gotten this free pass, this lucky break. That was why I was a freak. I, I, I got something I didn't deserve as opposed to the PhD. I don't think any of them would have cared about the PhD one way or another, and most people didn't know. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your rise and fall at, at the Chronicle, because when I was reading you in particular, it was 1985, 86, 87. I mean, you were the man. So... Then suddenly I, I start reading David Harris's book on Bill Walsh about the, the night that I emailed you, and suddenly I was, you know, uh, flooded with memories of, of my time covering the 49ers in, in the mid 80s, and 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 so I, you know, I jump onto Google and I think, what whatever happened to Lowell Kahn? And and then I see you're at the Santa Rosa Press Democrat, and and I think, what happened? You you ruled the roost. What happened? Well, what happened was, after probably seven or eight years at the Chronicle, um, 
I was not getting along.